welcome to all fours e learning classes yesterday we have discussed about introduction of halogen compounds classification and uh, nomenclature today we will discuss about isomerism and preparation of halogen compounds so isomerism 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 means the compounds which are having same chemical formula but exhibit different structures are called isomers not only this one whatever organic compound is given organic compounds are having same chemical formula but exhibit different structures are called isomers here isomerism mainly divided into two classes structural isomerism stereo isomerism structural isomerism means based on this structure atom to atom connectivity we can explain structural isomerism stereo isomerism concept is totally different when compared to structural isomerism here so we will go for structural isomerism right now here first one is chain isomerism chain isomerism chain isomerism means alkyl halogen compounds are having same chemical formula but differing the structures are called isomers the halogen compounds differ in the number of carbons in longest chain form is called chain isomers where is the difference in this case number of carbons differ in the longest chain form longest chain form for example here here chlorobutane is given one chlorobutane is given or one bromobutane is given or one iodobutane is given doesn't matter here cs3 is given again cs3 here ch2cl is given according to iupac nomenclature rules both are having first position but chain 1 2 3 c3 chain 1 2 3 4 c4 chain what is the difference in between them a number of carbons different differ in longest chain form this type of isomers are called chain isomers one chloropentane is given and two methyl one chlorobutane is given that those are generally called chain isomers only differ in the number of carbons in longest chain form is called chain isomers so second one is positional isomerism positional isomerism positional isomerism means halogen compounds are having same chemical formula but differ in the position of given halogen where we have to observe the in this case only differ in the position of given halogen may be chlorine or bromine or iodine this type of isomers are called positional isomers only position is different for example here here one chloropropane is given one chloropropane is given one chloropropane is given two chloropropane is given what is the difference in between them position of cl one chloropropane two chloropropane differ in the position of halogen due to that reason the both are generally called positional isomers positional isomers one chlorobutane two chlorobutane one bromobutane 
2 bromopentane 3 bromopentane this type of isomers are generally called positional isomers positional isomers third one is halogen compounds will not exhibit functional isomerism no chance to change that halogen in this case stereo isomerism means optical isomerism optical isomerism optical isomerism optical isomerism means the organic compounds which are having same chemical formula same atom to atom connectivity same group arrangement but a different the optical properties are called optical isomers according to general chemistry we can explain clearly optical isomerism but main criteria is symmetry elements even though compound is carrying chiral center any one of the symmetry element is present compound is optically inactive inactive here if the compounds are having asymmetric center or chiral center without symmetry elements compounds exhibit optical isomerism so you forget about that concept here mainly asymmetric center based on the asymmetric center or chiral center we can explain optical isomerism the given compound is carrying chiral center or not first we have to observe that one if asymmetric center is present or chiral center is present or stereogenic center is present compound is optically active compound optically active compound here for example here csc is given again here hydrogen is given again here c2 h5 is given here cl is given cl is given two chloro butane compound if we take second carbon the second carbon having chlorine hydrogen and ethyl and methyl the carbon is having four different groups is called what chiral carbon chiral carbon so due to the presence of chiral carbon or due to the presence of asymmetric center the compound exhibit optical activity not only this one whatever halogen compound is given based on the chiral centers we can explain optical activity given compound is carrying fluorine or chlorine or bromine or iodine doesn't matter given compound is carrying asymmetric center or not we have to observe that one in this case so this type of compounds exhibit optical isomerism optical isomerism here conformational isomerism conformational isomerism conformational isomerism means based on the carbon carbon single bond rotation we can explain conformational isomerism end carbons are having cl or middle carbons are having cl doesn't matter we have to observe that compound is carrying c c single bond or not free rotation of carbon carbon single bond we can get conformational isomers that means based on the given structure we can explain conformational isomers are possible or not here so halogens exhibit chain isomerism positional isomerism optical isomerism conformational isomerism so up to here conformational isomerism up to here conformational isomerism next concept is preparation of halogen compounds here so many methods are there to prepare the halogen compounds halogen compounds here first preparation method is halogenation reactions halogenation reactions means preparation of halogen compounds from alkanes alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons 
halogenation reactions means removal of hydrogen from alkanes by using halogens the type of reactions are called halogenation reactions halogenation reactions alkanes are alkanes are somewhat chemically inert compounds towards acids and bases and oxidizing agents what type of reactions are favorable for alkanes means free radical substitution reactions majority of the alkanes undergoes free radical substitution reactions here free radical substitution reactions so whatever alkane is given based on the connectivity of carbons nothing but hydrogens we can explain chemical activity of alkanes in free radical substitution reactions free radical substitution reactions here for example here normal methane is given for example here ethane is given for example here propane is given propane is given here tertiary butane is given tertiary butane is given according to structural aspects here ch bond is somewhat more stable when compared to ethyl ch bond and propyl ch bond and tertiary butyl ch bond carbon hydrogen bond energy is more when compared to these type of connectivities that means here bond energy order is bond energy order bond energy order is here ch is greater than ch is greater than primary hydrogen is greater than here secondary hydrogen is greater than and a tertiary hydrogen which is chemically inactive according to this bond energy order bond energy order bond energy is more means reactivity is very less reactivity is very less we required more amount of energy to break this bond that means chemically somewhat less active bond this one so if you take reactivity order if you take reactivity order reactivity order of hydrogens in free radical substitution reactions tertiary hydrogens tertiary hydrogens is greater than secondary hydrogens is greater than primary hydrogens is greater than and a normal hydrogens normal hydrogens normal hydrogens normal hydrogens based on the connectivity of hydrogens we can explain reactivity order of hydrogens in free radical substitution reactions here free radical substitution reactions now here halogens is given how to explain the halogens reactivity order means in free radical substitution reactions halogens reactivity order is halogens reactivity order is halogens reactivity order is fluorine is greater than chlorine is greater than bromine is greater than iodine compound fluorine chlorine bromine iodine here towards free radical substitution reactions fluorine reactivity is more when compared to chlorine chlorine reactivity is more when compared to bromine bromine reactivity is more when compared to iodine here iodine these three reactions are exothermic reactions but when compared to chlorine reactions bromine reactions are less exothermic reactions iodine free radical substitution reactions are endothermic reactions endothermic reactions free radical substitution reactions means one free radical is substituted by another free radical is called free radical substitution reactions so in this case fluorine is highly activated one we cannot control that reaction majority of the reactions are chlorine and bromine reactions iodine reaction also possible iodine reaction 
under normal conditions no chance to get the product but iodine also iodine reaction also possible in the presence of oxidizing agents like hno3 like hno3 and hio3 hno3 and hio3 why because iodine reducing properties are more iodine reducing properties are more dimerization power is more due to that reason under normal conditions iodine will not undergo free radical substitution reactions according to reaction mechanism then again i2 is formed in this case how to prevent that reaction means by the addition of oxidizing agents then iodine addition reaction is possible in this case this is a way to explain the halogens reactivity order in free radical substitution reactions but we have to some apply we have to apply this some conditions without conditions free radical mechanism is not possible here what type of conditions are suitable for free radical substitution reactions we have to apply the high temperature high temperature high temperature or sunlight or peroxide or peroxide normal peroxide or benzyl peroxides or other peroxides because these are initiators so r2o2 sulfuryl chloride so2 cl2 in the presence of temperature tertiary butoxide in these conditions free radical mechanism is possible without without these conditions no chance to get the product in this case so what type of conditions we have to apply in this case high temperature sunlight hydrogen peroxide sulfuryl chloride so2 cl2 in the presence of temperature or tertiary butoxide in the presence of temperature here temperatures so according to first year chemistry we can explain mechanism if you want to write the free radical mechanism totally three steps are there first step is initiation step second step is propagation step last step is termination step here so based on the that those steps we can write the final products final products here for example here ch4 molecule is given ch4 molecule is given ch4 molecule reacts with chlorine in the presence of sunlight in the presence of sunlight here the h free radical is substituted by cl free radical h free radical is substituted by cl free radical that means final product is ch3cl ch3cl again if you apply the chlorine in the presence of sunlight again h is replaced by what cl so second one is ch2 cl2 again if you apply the cl2 sunlight here ch3 uh, sorry ch cl3 again cl2 is given h nu is given final product is carbon tetrachloride carbon tetrachloride here that means in free radical substitution reactions so many compounds are formed in this case here suppose to be if we take methane form the chloromethane dichloromethane trichloromethane tetrachloromethane methyl chloride dichloromethane chloroform carbon tetrachloride that means according to this concept we cannot separate easily that formed products this is not suitable for laboratory to prepare the simple compounds however this method is imported commercially commercially why because halogens are available large amount in petroleum and 
natural gas commercially important method but laboratory method is given this is not a suitable for laboratory methods so so many compounds are formed in this case for example here propane compound is given propane compound here ch2 ch3 cl2 in the presence of sunlight or r2o2 is given or high temperature is given 523 673 kelvin temperature based on the hydrogens we can write number of products here first find out the connectivity of carbons how many types of hydrogens are there here two types this one is primary secondary primary primary so both are having same connectivity or different connectivity yes same connectivity primary connected with secondary primary connected with secondary that means both are will give same product only one product and the secondary compound will give one product that means how many products are possible here totally two products two chloropropane and one chloropropane here one chloropropane here two chloropropane one chloropropane how can you write the number of products means based on the types of hydrogens first we have to observe the what type of hydrogens present in a given compound based on the types of hydrogens we can write the product here which is major which is major means according to reactivity order tertiary is greater than secondary is greater than primary but how to find out the percentage means based on the chemical activity in free radical substitution reactions primary chlorine with the primary hydrogens primary hydrogens secondary hydrogens and the tertiary hydrogens primary hydrogens reactivity is 1 secondary hydrogens reactivity is 3.8 tertiary hydrogens reactivity is 5 in the same way bromine primary hydrogens reactivity is 1 secondary hydrogens reactivity is 80 times tertiary hydrogens reactivity means 1600 times based on these percentage we can find out percentages of formed products for example here 2 chloro sorry 2 methyl butane is given 2 methyl butane 2 methyl butane undergoes monohalogenation mono halogenation in the presence of sunlight then how many products are formed in this case then how many compounds are having chiral carbons or how many compounds have optical activity then total how many isomers are possible based on this molecule we can explain these rules here primary hydrogen and primary hydrogen and primary hydrogen and secondary hydrogens and tertiary hydrogens total how many products are possible here according to structure total four compounds are possible here why because primary connected with tertiary primary connected with tertiary this these two hydrogens will form the same product nothing but primary carbon primary carbon product are same here according to IUPAC nomenclature rules if you write the name for both compounds we will get only one name that means by using first one and second will will form only one product tertiary hydrogens one product secondary hydrogens one product the primary hydrogens one product why because when compared to these two primary hydrogens this primary hydrogen nature is different these both are connected with the tertiary primary this primary hydrogen primary carbon connected with secondary due to that reason this one will form different product when compared to these two if you take first one here if you take first one here a one total how many products are possible four products four products are possible here 
four products are possible here. Primary hydrogen is substituted by incoming chlorine ER1. Tertiary hydrogen is substituted by incoming chlorine. Secondary hydrogen is substituted by incoming chlorine. Primary hydrogen free radical is substituted by chlorine free radical. Total of how many products? Four products are possible here. How many compounds are having chiral center? How many products are having chiral center means how can you calculate that one here? Based on the connected groups or based on the connected atoms. Supposed to be if you take this one. Here CH2, CH3 again CH2, CH3. Here hydrogen is given. Here one chiral center. Here one chiral center. CH2Cl, CH3, H, ethyl. Four different groups are there. One chiral center. Here CS3 group is given. Here CS3 group. Both are same group. No chiral center. The carbon must have the four different groups. Is called what? Chiral carbon. If chiral carbon is there, compound exhibit optical activity. Now if you take this one. Here hydrogen is given. Here hydrogen, here hydrogen, here CS3 group. So here CS3 group, here hydrogen, here chlorine, here isopropyl group is there. That means here chiral center. Here hydrogen is given, here hydrogen is given, hydrogen is given, no chiral center here. No chiral center. How many compounds are having chiral centers? two compounds are having chiral centers remaining both are not carrying any type of chiral center in this case that means total four compounds are possible in that four compounds two compounds exhibit optical activity due to the presence of chiral center or stereogenic center or asymmetric center here this one is one of the important question for entrances this is the way to write the products. So wherever LID compound is given, the reactivity order of the reactivity order is allylic hydrogens, allylic hydrogens, allylic hydrogens, tertiary hydrogens, tertiary hydrogens and the secondary hydrogens and the primary hydrogens primary hydrogens this is the way to write that reactivity of alkenes compounds alkene compounds from alkenes preparation of halogen compounds from alkenes alkenes are unsaturated compounds alkenes are unsaturated compounds C double bond C functional group the compounds which are carrying C double bond C functional group is called alkenes unsaturated compounds undergoes electrophilic addition reactions electrophilic addition reactions so based on the electrophilic addition reactions we can prepare preparation of halogen compounds in this case by using the hydrogen halides by using the hydrogen halides by using the hydrogen halides we can prepare we can explain preparation of halogen compounds from alkenes hydrogen halides means what here hydrofluoric acid hydrochloric acid hydrobromic acid and hydroidic acid hydrogen fluoride hydrogen chloride hydrogen bromide and hydrogen iodide here so how to write the product means based on the markovnikov rule we can explain or we can write products so electrophilic addition reaction is given always we have to write the product based on the Markovnikov rule 
based on the Markovnikov rule. Markovnikov. Markovnikov rules. Markovnikov rule means what? According to Markovnikov rule, in electrophilic addition reactions, always nucleophile is added to more substituted carbon which is having less number of hydrogens and electrophile is added to less substituted carbon which is having more number of hydrogens. For example, here alkane is given like this. Here alkane is given like this means here electrophile is given and a nucleophile nothing but reagent is given. According to Markovnikov rule always nucleophile is added to be more substituted carbon which is having less number of hydrogens and electrophile is added to be less substituted carbon which is having more number of hydrogens more number of hydrogens. If you take this one how many hydrogens only one. If you take this one how many hydrogens two hydrogens. According to that concept nucleophile is added to this carbon electrophile is added to this carbon here. The Markovnikov rule is applicable for only unsymmetric compound but not symmetric compounds. For example here CH2 is given here CH2 is given ethylene compound. For example here CH3 is given CH double bond here CH2 is given. Here 2 butene is given. 2 butene is given. 2 butene is given. Here CH3 is given mono substituted propene is given. And then here CH3 is given di substituted butene is given. Butene is given. Then how to identify given compound is symmetric or not? Both sides are having same groups I mean symmetric. Symmetric here. So if you add the electrophile left side carbon or right side carbon doesn't matter will get same product. That means the Markovnikov rule is not applicable for this one. Here both are having same nature or different different nature. Only CS2 group is given, extra methyl group is there. According to double bond, both are having different connectivity. This one is asymmetric carbon. Then Markovnikov rule is applicable for this one. If you take this one, having same nature right side and left side, given compound is symmetric compound. Symmetric compound means Markovnikov rule is not applicable. If you add the electrophile, left side carbon or right side carbon doesn't matter in this case. Given compound is symmetric or unsymmetric? Unsymmetric compound. Here methyls are there, here CS2 group. Markovnikov rule is applicable for this one. Here symmetric compound is given. The Markovnikov rule is not applicable. Based on the Markovnikov rule, we can explain final product in this case. That means addition of halogenation reactions to alkene system means we have to write that product based on the Markovnikov rule. Markovnikov rule means electrophile is added to less substituted carbon, nucleophile is added to more substituted carbon. This is the way to explain the halogenation reactions. So we will see examples. Thank you. Tomorrow we will see examples on this concept.